16 years, which is reflected in his tummy. I'm assuming because of the size of your stomach there, <laughs> Shane. Uh, you could call me a foodie. Uh, lots of laughs. Nice to meet you all. Thank you, Shane, for typing that out. Appreciate that. Mr. Edward Green, how about you, sir? So my name is Edward Green. Um, as you can see, I am from a small town in Iowa. At least that's where I live now. I've actually lived uh, a lot of different places. Um, what am I up to? I am My day job is I'm a project manager in software. And one of my passions is to really help people to be fit and healthy. So that's what I do in my spare time is to um, help people through health, pro health products and some uh, coaching. And fun fact for me is I was in the Marine Corps for 20 years and I flew jet airplanes, so. Wow. Wow, jet airplanes. Mm. That would be just absolutely fascinating, stunning and scary at the same time, I'm sure. <laughs> it certainly was at times. <laughs> wow, very impressive. Garth, are you ready, sir? Can yes, sir. Hi, everyone. My name is Garth. Uh, I'm from New Jersey. I am a uh, licensed real estate agent in the state of New Jersey, and I work on a REMAX team. Uh, where am I? Yeah, so that's where I'm from. Fun fact about me. About two weeks ago, I climbed a tree for the first time in probably 40 years and uh, made it like halfway up the tree, and I felt like a kid again. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that must have brought such cheer and, and excitement to your heart on that one, Garth. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was a little bit harder getting out of it though. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely can relate because I love, I'm a tree climber and I love it. And I, I, every minute I have, I'm up in the trees playing and just giggling and swinging around. It's a lot of fun. Interesting that Garth, you you work for Remax and because John is in real estate as well. And yeah, I yeah, see that. Yeah, it's both. Yeah, John, you were through Remax. Yeah, I see it right there. Max. I'm, I'm, I'm Remax, Remax as well. Oh, Remax know? three. <laughs> and so are two of my children, Remax. <laughs> it's There's a family a reunion. <laughs> All right. Next, John. John, go for an introduction for you, with you, sir. I'm John McLennan, originally from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, but in, have been in Grand Prairie, Alberta since the late 80s. I'm a full-time realtor at Remax Grand Prairie, so I see Tim on occasion as we cross trails. I'm also uh, uh, the director for this area of northern Alberta for uh, BNI. It's a 35-year a referral organization, and I'm the head coach of the local speed skating club, and I guess this is maybe an unfun fact for the first time in as many years as I re can recall, we will not be returning to the ice in September. We're going to work on our outdoor oval and have the kids skating, but turning it back into fun, we're going to see what we can offer for the kids, you know, for dry land, you know, rather than uh, skating in September, October, November, and then hopefully once the weather permits. Sorry to talk about cold weather, but once mm -hmm. once the outdoor weather gets cold, we'll hopefully have the kids skating again uh, and get, get those long blades on their feet and let them go. Awesome. Yeah, I've never experienced uh, speed skating in regards to looking at those size of those skates, those blades look pretty big. Is that pretty tricky to, to master in the beginning? Well, my, my response to that is I, I don't do it. I coach it. I'm really good at coaching it, but I don't do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just a new technique. If you, if you figure skated or hockey skated or even just recreationally skated, you're halfway there. It's just a little bit of a different stride, a different, it's a different type of a blade. So you just have to learn how to push and then um, away you go. And it, 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 it's not meant, you don't have to go fast. It's called speed skating, but actually many, many seniors participate because it's just a nice leisurely activity to do um, at whatever pace that you'd like. Awesome. All right, Shauna, we'll get you to okay. introduce so, yourself again. <laughs> so my name is Shauna Kutch, not Kutch. And I'm founder of Journey into the Heart. And what I specialize in is relationship with anybody, business, family, friends, lovers. I can bring it to a whole nother level. I call it a relationship alchemy because I understand the dynamics and I understand um, how to help you understand the differences in men and women and how they communicate completely different and how to uh, be able to have 
a deep uh, communication that brings on intimacy, no matter who it is. And I'm talking about deep, deep loving communication so that we can spread more love in the world. And so that's, that's what I'm really passionate about. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, Shauna. And a quick introduction of who I am. I'm Richard Martin, Grand Prairie, Alberta, and I'm your host here today. And I see Sean just entered the, the venue here. And what I do is I, I've been actually doing real estate investing and learning with Sherilyn. She's taught me lots, a great mentor. And Tim is up in Grand Prairie area. He's been wonderful in that area. And what I'm currently doing right now is I'm helping uh, high value content providers get their information on a platform that is available to people around the world. It's actually quite fascinating. So the main purpose of today is we're going to co-create with you a simple, fun, and magical micro distinctions to free exponentially abundance in money, time, and magic. Ladies and gentlemen, let me welcome to the room, Mr. Sean Callagy. Hey. Hey. hey, Richard. What's up, brother? Hey, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your patience. I would normally be on earlier. I was uh, been dealing with some technology challenges as I'm here at the Enchantment Resort in Sedona, Arizona. I'm privileged to be here uh, in the Tony Robbins uh, Platinum Lions program. So there's about uh, 24 of us here for this weekend, and there is like no reception here. So I had some variety of challenges with today. So thank you for your patience. And Richard, great job, brother, um, and really excited to be here. And we're going to free... Uh, Influence is a superpower and knowing what to do with it. That may sound hyperbolic. Uh, again, my name is Sean Callagy, co-founder of Unblinded, creator of the Unblinded Formula. And this formula has transformed my life uh, and given me incredible choices over the past 23 years. And I was a relatively introverted person growing up. My sophomore year at Columbia University, for most of my second semester, I ate, ate, ate lunch by myself in my car. Um, and so I was not like born this extroverted human and, uh, yeah. And I learned about influence and I learned about what to do with it. I learned about exponentiality from the work of people like Tony Robbins and Jay Abraham and Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill. I've now had the privilege of speaking on Tony Robbins stage at seven of the last eight events, uh, all six of the last live events. Um, I, I was not speaking at the first UPW. I just spoke at business mastery and, um, I own a 125 person law firm. I'm one of only two attorneys in the United States of America between 2014 and 16 to twice be in the top 100 national jury verdicts. And I was the only one who was blind. Yes, the fun fact is I am blind. I cannot see anything on the screen whatsoever. I have a little bit of wide peripheral field. I'm also on the board of the American Foundation for the Blind. And my passion in life, as Richard just uh, noted, is to free uh, us in our money, time, and magic through unleashing our integrity-based influence, heart-centered influence, and knowing what to do with it. So yeah, we're going to unpack some stuff today. And Richard, if you wouldn't mind, and again, I apologize if you shared this already, who are our judges for today? We have one judge here today, and her name is Shauna. All right. Awesome, Shauna. Pleasure to meet you, Shauna. Good to meet you, Sean. Yeah, awesome. And so um, Richard, um, are you ready to go? Yes, sir. We are ready to go. All right. So would you like me to drop in really quickly on how it works? Yes, that would be wonderful, please. Yeah, thank you. So it's a, a three minute process where you're going from hello to yes with Richard. And you're like, hello to yes. Like what? what do we, like, yeah, hello to yes. Because hello to yes is what affects our leadership, our marketing, our selling, our socialization, and every part of our life. Like nothing begins without, yes. Yeah, like, hey, you want to like hang out? We're in kindergarten. You want to come over and play? Hey, you want to join the team? Hey, you want to be in the chorus? Hey, would you accept, accept me college, uh, high school, you know, private school? Um, would you, um, would you want to have a complimentary coaching session with me? Would you like to, uh, yeah, sit down and have a consultation about your legal problem, your accounting problem, your financial problem, right? Whatever that is. Hey, you're selling your home. Would you like to talk about it? And then there's a yes to sell the home or to solve the case or to unlock whatever it is in your beautiful work you're doing in your coaching or your speaking or your accounting. And that's what this is about. So, um, and to do that, we not only sell, but we also market. We work with people and there was a process where, you know, to, to get onto Tony Robbins stage and speak, that was not a short uh, one yes. That was a whole bunch of yeses over a sequencing of time. And so what does that look like if you're going to get on somebody's stage or podcast 
or you're going to co-create an event together, you're going to speak. So Richard can be for you, will be for you, whomever you want him to be. He could be just Richard, right? He could be just President Trump, President Obama, right? Or anybody. Whatever the yes is that would matter to you in the world. And the yes does not have to be a sale. This is not boiler room, Wolf of Wall Street sales training. This is, this is integrous, heart-centered connection with intentionality to go somewhere. You know, Oprah Winfrey said she held the microphone for 30,000 people because she said, I see you, I hear you, and what you say matters to me. That's what's about the opening of listening, right? So it's Richard feeling heard and seen as that role player, that person, that avatar that, that you're seeking a yes from in the world today. You're all seeking yeses. Who would you like Richard to be? That's the question. A client, and, and by the way, the yes doesn't have to be a sale. It could be just a longer meeting. And that's it. And have fun. Because like, it's not fun to build business if it's not fun, right? So fun and magic at the root of all of it, you know? So Richard, uh, who here would uh, be going first? All right, any volunteers at the moment or shall I just grab, pick a name? Any lovely volunteers? All right, so why don't we go with Edward? Hey, Edward. All right. Hey, Sean. Hey. How are you? I'm doing great, Edward. And uh, what is it again that you do? Uh, well, I'm a project manager in software, but what I'm here to talk about is my passion, which is to help people to be fit and healthy. So I want to talk about um, some superfoods that uh, I want to interest Richard in. Cool. Awesome. So would you like Richard to be Richard? Yeah, I think Richard can just be Richard and I'll, I'll go through the process like I would with anybody who would be interested, I think, which is everybody, but yes. Yeah, well, I would definitely like to learn about some superfoods and I believe we are all learning from one another and my diet is relatively horrific. So I look forward to hearing about these superfoods. So thank you. Excellent. 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 So please take a sense three minutes and uh, with 30 seconds to go, you hear me say 30 seconds. Sound good? Sounds great. All right, please take us in. All right. Thanks. Hey, Richard, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing very well, Edward. Cool. So, yeah, just um, interesting times, you know, with uh, with 2020 and COVID and all this stuff. And just wanted to check in. And I know you had some interest in in some health um, items and just wanted to understand kind of what you're doing these days for your health, like uh, anything special that you're doing to improve your health, knowing that there's some some challenges out there. Well, Edward, I, I don't believe I told you, but I've got type one diabetes for 40 years and I'm, I'm just only taking, you know, the basic vitamins and such. So I was uh, hoping to get some better information. Oh, well, that's awesome, man, because um, I think I've got some things that might interest you. But I guess um, more specifically, like, um, how is that manifesting in your life? Like, is there is there a certain place where that's holding you back or like, you know, just is there some you know specific challenge like physically or mentally, like what, how is that sort of impacting you in your life these days? Well, I've, I've got two approaches. One is a, a young lady brought to my attention that my shadow is uh, really strong out of the out of character and I'm a health nut, so I'm a vegan. And uh, I was pretty impressed today. I went and actually bench pressed 270 pounds. So it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing quite well that way, but I, I got to improve my, my eating. So that's what I got to work on. Excellent. Excellent. So what specifically, like, um, it sounds like you're vegan. So what I'm hearing is you're a vegan. Is there, where are you, where do you feel like you might be falling down in your eating? I am falling down on my eating regards to when I leave the house and there's all these drive throughs and temptations. And if, if I eat a high fi con high fat content foods, then it really affects my, my insulin. I got to take more insulin for it. Excellent. So, um, what is, what is this going to mean to you? I mean, you know, if you're able to maybe make a transformation and not have this problem and maybe have access to a, um, something really quick, like healthy fast food, what would that mean to you in your life? What kind of um, impact do you think that might have? I, I, I feel that it would be a big transformation for me. Yes. Cause it would, I'd be more, more, more focused and, and being able to do the things that I promised myself to do. Excellent. Well, would it be okay if I shared a little bit about my journey and how I might uh, relate to some of the things you're going through? Uh, sure, I'd love to hear some more. 
Okay. Well, when I, when I turned 50, I was in physical pain. And even though I'd been a person who had worked out my entire life, my food choices were, were seriously suboptimal. And I was on cholesterol meds and I actually went basically pure vegan. Uh, I took a 10 day challenge and I really never turned back. So I stayed pure vegan for a long period of time. And through that process, I realized that I was able to get myself off cholesterol meds naturally just by eating uh, healthy superfoods. And through this journey, I kept looking for more and more and more distinctions around better nutrient dense food, because what I found was most people don't have a shortage of food. They have a shortage of nutrients in their diet and that's what they're really missing. And I found uh, a specific company uh, called Purium and they have the best, the healthiest uh, fast food on the planet. It's basically uh, a green drink that you can mix up very quickly and, you know, take it as healthy fast food. So if you're, if you're out and about, you can have a shaker bottle like I have here. I just put my oh, screen. So yeah, put my green drink in there and then I can take it on the run with me. And then when I get hungry, I can, I can drink that and it, and it satisfies me. And, you know, so does any of that interest you? In, 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 in terms of, you know, what I'm talking about there in terms of healthy fast food? Actually, yes, it does. It uh, intrigues me in regards to uh, how you got off your cholesterol medicine and everything like that. My doctor keeps telling me that he, you need to take meds to bring down your cholesterol. 30 seconds. Yeah. And what I found is um, you really don't. Um, you, you know, there's been a lot of studies, you know, Dr. Pritikin and all other people have found. So, um, Given that, would it be okay if we set up a time where we could follow up and I could maybe share a little bit more about uh, some of these nutrient-dense superfoods and maybe take it to, to the next level of discussion? Ed, I would love that. that. That sounds like something I need in my life. Okay. What's the best way to follow up with you? Do you have uh, an email or phone? Yeah, here's my phone number, 555-555. Give me a call and we'll set up an appointment. Sounds great. All right. Excellent Appreciate job. It, Richard. I look forward to it. Yeah. Or how'd that feel for you? Good. Good. It felt good. It felt kind of natural. Um, you know, it felt really good actually. Awesome. All right. Uh, Shauna, um, we'll go 30 seconds of feedback. And if we give a score from one to 10, what do you have? Well, um, I really, I was really impressed with the way you got right in and related to him and his diabetes and asked the impact on and you also related with him and being a vegan. And so you brought that up. So you had a lot there you were um, related to. And so, and you asked him the impact of the diabetes on his life. So I'm actually gonna give him a pretty high score of, of nine. Very nice, excellent. So quick thought and feedback for me. Um, I agree, it was a beautiful sequencing, putting something at stake. What's it gonna mean to you, right? Talk suboptimal, like cool, right? Fun, awesome. and key thought though is acknowledgement, right? The acknowledgement of people it feels so good to feel seen, heard, understood. Richard said one thing that was really unique that he was proud of. Like, cause we don't say anything unless we want people to know. So what do you think I'm thinking about when I th said that Richard said something that was really, really quite unique that he was proud of? What was that? You got me. I was not listening well enough. Express? <laughs> Brain, Brain, Brain expression. Who, who said that? I can't. I'm, I'm blind, so I can't Garth. See. Garth. Hey, Garth. Garth? Hey. Yeah, like Garth Brooks. Yeah, awesome. Garth. Yeah. So, Richard, are you proud that you bench pressed 270 pounds? At 5 o'clock this morning? Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And he's proud. And what else, Garth, is he proud of besides that he did 270? What did he just say he was proud of? Uh, he's proud of, uh, you know, maintaining his diet. Yeah. And yeah. then he got up at, and they got up at five o'clock in the morning to do, to do it. Yeah. Right. So a uh, quick footnote, my brother, um, uh, a year and a half ago, as I was uh, engaged in similar activity, I ripped my pec off my body. So be mindful of the process. And certainly I hope you have a spotter nearby because I did not. And uh, yes, then I had a pec surgery. So that's a fun little fun fact, my fun fact for today. Um, so, but excellent job overall. Richard, who's next? All right. Well, why don't we go with our director of BNI, Mr. John McLennan. Hey, John, how are you? I'm well, thank you very much, Sean. Yeah, John, uh, fun fact again, I'll, I'll keep giving some uh, synergistic, synchronistic things. Um, I received extraordinary benefit 
from having been the president of my BNI chapter back in 1997, 1998. And it was one of the tools I used that transformed my life. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, well, thank you for your great work in the world. So who would you like uh, Richard to be? Uh, uh, Richard, I think you could be yourself. We already have a, a, a relationship. So, you know, I, I, I see you as I already know you, I think, rather than, uh, uh, you know, painting you with another brush at the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome. And by the way, John, like, I mean it sincerely. I don't think, you know, it works so effectively. It's a longer story for a different day. But uh, I mean it. Uh, so if there's ever, you know, it would ever be beneficial for a testimonial and endorsement, uh, my BNI story, I think, would be quite unique uh, in terms of um, the effectiveness of the structure. So be happy to share that some other time. But so thank, thank you. you for your work. Yeah. You. So yeah, please take. Uh, Richard has uh, three minutes. So you want to take us in? Uh, so Richard, as I think you're aware, uh, in Grand Prairie and area, we've had BNI going for eight years. Globally, the organization is about 35 plus years. There's around 9,000 chapters globally. But of course, day to day, I'm involved with the three chapters here close to home in, in Grand Prairie. So we've, we've sort of uh, fluctuated between 60 to 70 members. And as Sean is aware, in BNI, we, we operate with the core value of giver's gain. It's how can I help you, Richard? How can I help you, Shauna? How can I help you, Tim? We firmly believe in the law of reciprocity in that if we're genuine in our desire to help others, the timing, the, the, the where it comes back from, that's not for us to worry about, but it does reciprocate back to help us in our businesses. What I've uh, desired for Grand Prairie, however, based on, I think, some legitimate, stati legitimate statistics, is I would like us to be north of 100 members in the Grand Prairie area, because then we would move, I believe, from a, oh yeah, that INB thing or that BNI thing, I think I've heard of it, or isn't that Rotary? We would transition from that to, wait a minute, you're not part of BNI? So just broadening and increasing the footprint of, of BNI, um, not just for the sake of having more people, but knowing that people that are desirous to, to use that giver's game mentality to help others grow in their business, partly because Grand Prairie is regarded as the entrepreneurial capital of Canada. That's, that's quite a, a marker for a, a, you know, a, a city to have. So we know that there are right here within our serving area of about a quarter million people, there's probably another 20 or 30 people that believe in givers gain and can help contribute to others growing their business. But we would like just to, you know, get the word out uh, so that we can not necessarily add more chapters, perhaps just grow our existing three, but get north of 100 BNI members in the Grand Prairie area. That's, that's what I'm hoping to do. And I'd certainly be, you know, knowing the type of individual you are, you have a heart you, you, you wear your heart on your sleeve. So I think that might kind of connect with you and any thoughts you have, I would sincerely appreciate. Well, thank you, John, for bringing that to my attention. I didn't know that much history about the BNI being up here for eight years. And it was interesting in regards to the desire and the genuineness and timing. Um, like what would I need to do to, to qualify or be part of this BNI organization? Well, generally, either be an employee at a business, and then in that regard, the owner of the company would at least be open-minded to consider it, or of course, be an entrepreneur owning your own business. And B and I, you know, there there are some qualifications, but generally, perhaps been in business for a little over a year, so that you feel you are this is the business that you're working on building, and then that B and I might be a you know a, a foundation to continue growing that business. All right, that, that sounds quite interesting. So what's, is there an, like an application I got to fill out or is there like, do I got to bench press something or? <laughs> well, some people, when they go through the membership, there is a membership and interview process. There is a membership committee. So yet yeah, to some that is feeling like they're going, they're being put through the gym or something like that. You know, uh, BNI is actually very structured because, you know, once, once a member is in, there's an analogy of imagine people flowing into a room and once they're in they can't get out just for mm -hmm. the sake of the analogy so b and i takes very seriously they want it to work of course for the existing members but also for that person who might be stepping into that room if again for the analogy none of us can ever leave 
we want to really be committed to, to working with each other, growing with each other and supporting each other's businesses. So yeah, there's a, there's a, there's an interview process, but it's quite standard HR 101, you know, to make sure that it, it, it works out for the individual who's applying. Well, you definitely got my curiosity going on here. So I, I'd be interested in checking it out, but you know, I'm not really interested in writing a check immediately. Yeah, that's why interested parties are more than welcome to visit. If they're thinking of applying, we allow two visits. Of course, now it's very similar to this online meetings rather than in-person meetings. But yeah, there's lots of opportunity just to check it out. And then if there's no interest, hey, you've still made some great connections. Awesome. Wonderful. Great. John, how'd that feel for you? Oh, uh, it felt very nice. Again, having a little bit of a knowledge of, uh, uh, and awareness of, of Richard already as a friend made it made it more comfortable. But kind of that said, that almost increased the, oh, I want to get this right. I know Richard. I respect Richard. I want to I want to live up to, you know, my, you know, his potential respect level of, of myself. So it's kind of weird how that can uh, play a bit of a part. Oh, awesome, brother. So, Shauna, what do you have? So don't take this personal. <laughs> um, and I thought it was awesome the way you acknowledge him with a big heart and acknowledge that connection you have with him. And that was really awesome. And I love that you have, you're very knowledgeable in your, in what you have and you sound very passionate about it. So I really thought that was great. Um, but I am giving you um, 6.5 because um, the, in, in, um, in, for me in listening, I didn't even, uh, I don't catch words because I have to have to feel, have to feel what you're doing. And so I could have, if you, if you ask Richard more questions about whatever, um, avenue that that would touch him so that he could feel, um, what you're saying and connect to it with his heart and his, his passion. And so I thought that you could um, go in that direction more and ask a lot more about him and connect with him on in the in the area. Yeah, you're a friend with him, but there may be things you don't even know about him when it comes to what you what you're uh, offering. And so I think that getting to know that more would have been served you better and served Richard. Thank you, Sean. Awesome, Sean. Yeah, and so. And John, I would say, and I'll, I'll give some feedback after the next couple of folks go, just about really opening the listening of folks and some rapport building dynamics, but I mean, very congruent. You're clearly uh, an uber professional, integrous human, and that like screams out. So you're very congruent. That's awesome. Um, so thank you. And if I could just briefly share this. So the BNI story, just maybe this will be supportive of you getting to your 100 members out, up there and um, and like just sharing what's possible. So I'm 28 years old. I had quit my job at a major law firm and started my own law firm on my credit card, $100,000 in debt, no ecosystem whatsoever, no people that I knew, no contacts, connections, right? And I started my own group. I had six people in the group um, in the beginning. And one of them was a chiropractor. And one of the things I was thinking is like, who would hire a young attorney? I'm like, okay, chiropractors probably. So in the beginning, you know, I was getting some um, lower level referrals, but still very thankful for them. I, I had no money. I was scared to death every single day. And, you know, it was like a will here and my, you know, my cousin's car got stolen and can you help him as a lawyer, those kind of things. And then I'm like thinking, I'm like, you know, but what is it really that I need, you know? And so, and I was trying to give as much as I could energetically in leadership. And I asked the chiropractor, I'm like, is there a group of chiropractors that, they assemble, you know, that, that kind of get together. And he's like, yeah, the Northern New Jersey Chiropractic Society. I'm like, wow. I'm like, do they bring in speakers? And he's like, yeah. And so he contacted, well, I said, can I call them and just say, I'm not asking for an endorsement, but just that we're in the same group, this, the BNI group. He said, sure. So I called up condensing the story. I ended up speaking in front of that group. I understood the, the critical um, privileged moment, the window that was open and I created a talk that resonated tremendously. I said that you're at war and you don't even know it, which is about the chiropractors and what they were dealing with with, with insurance companies. Mm -hmm. And that led to about 10 of them becoming my client. It led to one of the people who was there uh, offering me an opportunity to speak in front of the state chiropractic society. That led to the state chiropractic society 
um, us become my firm becoming counsel to the state society. I sold that first law firm. Um, the person I sold it to, um, somebody who originally worked for me and then had become a minority partner, that person is, still has that ecosystem relationship to this very day as counsel to the New Jersey State Chiropractic Society and has fed his family for 20 years from it. But for BNI, that doesn't happen. It, listen, but for other training I had to know what to do with it doesn't happen. But for BNI, that doesn't happen and built a 40-person built a law firm in two years from that moment serving that one ecosystem. So that, that was my BNI experience and uh, it was extraordinary. Incredible. Thank you so much, Sean, for sharing that. Yeah, well, thank you for everything that you're doing. Richard, back to you, brother. Who's next? All right, Tim, how about we go with you, sir? Sure. Um, I guess if you could be um, yourself as a business owner, but not, not have your real estate background, um, basically someone who maybe has a business and, and knows that real estate's a good thing, but maybe not uh, actually an investor yourself. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> okay, take us in. Hey, Richard, good to see you again. Hey, thanks, Tim. What are you up to these days? Uh, not a heck of a lot, just, you know, working pretty hard on my business. Uh, just It's kind of slowed down during this this COVID season, so I'm a little worried and concerned. Oh, yeah, 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 no, fair enough. Yeah, I know it's definitely a more challenging time right now. Um, I mean, what I've been, I've been doing my commercial um, investing lately with the real estate and um, yeah, it's been a bit more challenging lately, but still, still a good opportunity there. And, and I think there's gonna be more and more opportunities here. Um, you know, as the, if the market does go down a bit, there'll be some opportunities to, to pick up some stuff at, uh, you know, better prices and, and get some good long-term re returns for, for people who are, are willing to, to invest. And uh, have, have you done any investing before in real estate? No, actually, I haven't. I, I mean, I hear people talk about it, you know, around the dinner table, and how one friend is saying how bad it was being a landlord. Yeah, no, it, it definitely can be can be challenging. It's, it's definitely not for everybody. And, and that's what I do. I, I actually, I've been doing it for almost 20 years now. And uh, it's been been very good. I mean, yeah, you, you learn a lot, you have, you have some horror stories, but uh, overall, it's been been a very good journey. I'm, I'm doing it full time now. And what I also do is I, I invite invite others in who, who, you know, they know real estate's a, a good investment long term, but they don't want to deal with tenants and legal and paperwork and just the time of learning everything. So I invite others in to, to join me and, and they basically get to um, invest alongside me and, and I do the work and they just basically invest and we kind of, uh, profit together. And, and that's, that's what I do for, for partners. Mm, that sounds quite interesting. I, I guess I'm kind of a person because I got my own business. I like to be in control of everything. I'm not too sure if I really want to give up that control because it doesn't look that difficult. I mean, all you got to do is buy the building, put people in it, don't you? <laughs> well, in, in theory, there's, there's, it's, it is a simple business, but there's, there's a lot to it. I mean, um, as far as a lot to um, learn, as far as, what what what's a good buy and, and what tenants to to work with and, and how to finance them and, and there's like i said i'm, I'm full-time at it. that's that's all i do so there is a lot more to it than than a lot of people think um but like i said the reason i, I bring people in who um they, without going through that learning curve if somebody wanted to to you know get a large portfolio themselves and and get into it then then by all means that's a that's an, an option but I'm, I'm more for people who want to um, they're, they're busy in their own business and they, they know the investments, uh, you know, real estate is good long-term and they just want to do something more hands-off, you know, not, not take up their time and their learning curve and, and have their money get much better returns and you can get a lot of other places and, and, and really safe as well being that it's, it's real estate. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, it does sound a little bit more complicated. I was thinking simpler. Um, actually, Tim, sounds quite interesting. I'm kind of running short on time here. What do you, what's, your, what's our next step? Well, if, if, if it's something you want to talk about, I mean, we can, I can set up a meeting next week and uh, I can kind of go through how it all works and all the kind of the details of it and, and what to be looking for and, and, and see if we're a good fit. I mean, I, I don't work with, with everybody. I like to, to, you know, work with people who, who we get along well and, and we have the same goals. So if, if we're a good fit, then, then we could go and kind of go through that and, and go from there. So, I mean, I'm free on, on Monday morning or, or Thursday afternoon. Do either of those times work for you? Uh, Monday is perfect for me. Okay, well, how about, how about 10 o'clock? I'll give you my address for my office and we can go through different uh, options. Done. I'm excited. All right, Tim, excellent work, man. How'd that feel for you? Uh, it was 
it was okay. A little, little forced at times, I guess, but I, I was, yeah, it's good to, good to practice it. Yeah. And Tim, what, what type of real estate investing you're up to? I, I do commercial real estate investing. So um, shop bays, offices, apartment buildings, that kind of stuff. And I just bring in passive partners who, who want to just invest alongside. Okay. So, so you're, you're, what you're seeking is um, um, investors. Yes, correct. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Shauna. Okay. Well, um, I think um, uh, with the fact that he did bring up his concerns, uh, landlord, uh, he was told land, it's horrible being a landlord. Um, first of all, I want to say, I think that um, you have some great opportunities. I can tell by how you're um, presenting and your enthusiasm for it, for what you do, that uh, you're very successful and uh, made me curious about, you know, what you do. And so I really appreciated that. Um, but I think in, when he expressed that about the horrible landlord, then um, there should have been a question what, uh, what the concern was there or, or more into his concerns. And then um, being a, a, not acknowledging him like on a personal level as connecting with him as a friend, even though you're friends, to never take advantage of that connection and still um, do something to solidify or to acknowledge that connection with him would have been uh, good. And then to address his concerns where he said, I like to be in control and get more into that concern because um, maybe there's something there that you could uh, help him overcome that concern. And, um, and then also where you said, um, um, if, if it's something you'd like, rather than um, go the positive and say, you know, I'm really excited. Sounds like we've got something uh, together instead of uh, putting the question in there that if it's something he likes, uh, I would have um, uh, been more um, on, you know, bringing him into it with excitement, enthusiasm. So I'm giving you a six. <laughs> excellent shot. so tim excellent work we'll talk um i'm gonna go after the next person richard and give a little bit of thought about how we open up listening at a, a deeper level there's three levels of rapport the surface level rapport there's a real rapport like genuine authentic like presence in a conversation and there's heart-centered emotional rapport and um if you read the work of Malcolm Gladwell on the tipping point, and he talks about three unique elements that mavens, connectors, and salespeople, like the law of the special few that possess a superpower of influence. Second, he talks about the stickiness factor, like what makes things stick and stay. And third, context. We're not going to address context, far more complicated. But then if you, if you read the work contagious, um, right? In contagious, it talks about what makes things, like what emotional, what em emotions make things sticky but which emotions do. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But Richard, uh, back to you, brother. Who's next? All right, thank you, Sean. Um, we have two people that actually have really poor connections. So we're down to one person that's left. Cool. And this wonderful individual, all the way from Barbados. Barbados? Is Garth Stanford. Garth, what's <laughs> happening, man, from Barbados? I didn't know that before. What brings yeah. you from Barbados? Well, Sean, we actually had uh, dinner uh, many a long, long time ago with Network Plus, uh, Ted Fatteros's group. We met for for dinner once off the Garden State Parkway. Oh my good! What th that had to be back in what, like two thousand six or so? Yeah, somewhere around there. <laughs> it was a long, long time ago. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, you weren't blind back then. <laughs> yeah. So I it? haven't seen you. Yeah, I haven't seen you back then. But uh, I actually li I live in Westfield, New Jersey. Okay. But I'm here in Barbados taking care of my parents. Uh, my mother has dementia, and, and I, oh, I'm so I sorry. need to be here to take care of, of, of her. Oh so my, my, um, my um, so Richard, you're going to be a, a buyer, someone who's looking to purchase a home. I, I do re real estate remotely from Barbados. I'm on a REMAX team. And uh, I, have, I have this crazy thing. How did you get connected to Richard and be here today? Like, this is wild. <laughs> Well, actually, there, there's Tony Rodriguez. There's there's uh, there's a bunch of people that uh, have told me about the Unblinded. Uh, uh, but uh, I did a real raw for Dayton, 
and Nick uh, reached out to me and asked me, since you're in real estate, you know, why don't you come on? And that's how I'm here today. Right. That's wild, brother. Well, so, yeah. yeah, so good. And you know that Ted passed away, you know. Yes, I did. Week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he did. It's unfortunate. Yeah. All right, man. So please, who would you like Richard to be? Oh, so Richard, I would like you to be a buyer, uh, someone who's looking to purchase a home. It could be your first time or your second time. Um, actually, let's make it your first time. You don't know anything about real estate. Uh, you may be even coming from out of state, but that's up to you. You can come up with that scenario. And um, I want to talk to you about uh, becoming your agent to help you find the home of your dreams. Okay, I'm ready for you. I'll take a single. Okay, okay. and we're, we're talking on the phone. So this is a phone call. Okay. So, uh, hey, Richard, I got your name from a friend of yours. Uh, I think his name was uh, Tim Blake. Uh, he said that you were... You were interested in, in, in purchasing a, a home. Could you tell me a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, Tim Blake is a really good friend of mine, and uh, he only deals with commercial. And I, I, I want to buy a home, and I'm just not familiar with that. Like, um, can I just go out and buy one? Okay. Well, what 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 makes you decide you want to buy a home now? Well, I want to get prepared for you know I want to grow a family um, and have a, a great place, a, a backyard for them to be in. Okay, and so when you see a, when you see a, a do, 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 when you say family, you, do you have do you have children or are you? I have one on its way. One on its oh wow oh, wow oh, wonderful congratulations, so uh, so you so you see so you 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 have a vision of your your your, your kids uh, playing in the backyard. Uh, what kind of house would you see them in? I would see them in a, a fully fenced, safe yard, uh, really secure uh, neighborhood, uh, good neighbors, a uh, good friendly area, a playground not far away, uh, schools in the area, like probably an elementary school would be wonderful. All right. So if I think I heard you right, so, you know, safety is a big concern of yours. Like says, uh, safety of your children or your family, that's something that's really important to you? Yes, safety is, is one of the, the highest priorities, yes. Okay, and then, um, you know, obviously you, you want to be in a good uh, neighborhood where the school system is, a, is, is of a higher quality, correct? Yep, that is absolutely correct. Okay, so those are, those are all good reasons, and there are plenty of homes like that in uh, New Jersey and neighborhoods like that in New Jersey. Did you have, uh, have you, have you uh, talked to anyone about purchasing a home before? Do you, are you familiar with what the process, what's involved in the process? No, I'm not not too sure what's involved in the process. I, I mean, I, I just went out, I uh, got financing, I bought myself a, a high-end Range Rover, the safest okay. vehicle on the road, $100,000. <laughs> she is a beauty, and my, my child is going to be the safest kid in town. Okay, I got that, man. That's a, that's a beautiful vehicle, and it's, uh, you know, I, like I said, I get safety is really important to you. It's very important, and uh and not just safety for your family, but safety for yourself and, 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 and your surroundings. So what I would like to do is I would like to spend a little bit more time with you, probably meet with you in person and sit down and talk to you about what your needs are, get into a lot of detail, a little bit more detail of what's involved in a real estate process, uh, help you to find a, a mortgage uh, person if you don't have one yet. Uh, take you through what, what, what to look for and maybe even preview some properties for you online. Is that something that would interest you? Oh, definitely. I would be. I'd be really excited about that. I'm just going to go. I'm looking at a holiday trailer after I'm done. I got a full <laughs> All right. the Range Rover. All right. So money, one, but everybody's giving the money away free. This is going to be great. <laughs> Fantastic. So why don't we do this then? Could you tell me, uh, or is mornings or evenings uh, good for you? Hey, mornings are the best time for me. Mornings are the best time. How about um, uh, Monday or Wednesday of next week? Let's do it. That sounds exciting. Okay. Okay, great. So you have, I, I have your number and I'll call you to confirm the day before, but I look forward to meeting you and helping you to, to create that amazing uh, family life that you want for yourself. For and sure. Your, your child is on the way. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Excellent work, Garth. How'd that feel for you? That was okay. <laughs> okay. And well, by the way, what part of Barbados are you in? I'm in St. James. I'm uh, just below Westmoreland. Wow. Not so too far from Sandy Lane. Yes, that, that is unbelievable. And ha that's not that far from Spice Town. Am I right about that? Or no, right? Spice Town is probably about three, four miles away. That's pretty close, right? So um, my dad um, got married in Barbados. And oh, yeah? Wow. Back in 1983, remarried. 
And um, I did my first scuba diving of my life in Barbados with him on that trip. So oh, that's Barbados. awesome. Well, well, we have that in common. I learned to scuba dive in Barbados as well, too. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is unbelievable. And uh, yeah. Dr. Mike Webster, um, the, the Webster family, um, was somebody we got to know really well and his family mm -hmm. and kids and everything. So awesome. So, yes, Shauna, what do we have uh, for this fine man coming from Barbados today? Garth. Hey, so I thought you did really good, um, Garth, in uh, getting the information and getting uh, him to be able to uh, express what his needs were. And um, there was a time when he first said, I don't know anything about buying a house, you know, maybe you could um, give him a little bit of um, relaxed about that, get, have him be relaxed about that. But you did really good finding out what he wanted a house. Um, the only thing I'd like to see more of is um, having more of a heart-to-heart -heart connection on that where maybe you really uh, acknowledge how everything he said was concerning the, uh, his child. So obviously he's very excited. And he, even though you did bring that up, maybe um, get a little more rapport going in what, what really, uh, where his real passion is. And so you can really connect to him on that level. So I'm giving you a nine. And I don't know, because you did open up and open up the listening. And um, I think, didn't I do a 9.5 for the, anyway. All right, Sean, that's great. Sean, are you having fun giving feedback? You're doing a fantastic job. And I'm <laughs> feeling you. like your part and your energy. Yes, I, um, I'm i loving, I, I, I blanked and blinded. And um, I'm pretty excited because, um, I just love the program and now I'm more, I did a judging before and I was nervous, but now I'm not. And so, yeah. Well, well air fist bump. Awesome job. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Yeah. And so, all right. So uh, Richard, um, we're complete as far as participants, correct? Yes, that is absolutely correct. Yeah. All right. Awesome. So just going to drop in for a quick moment um, on the, like the opening of listening and heart centeredness. So uh, John, would it be okay if we um, just did a quick, uh, demonstration. Sure. Yeah, cool. So John, uh, again, thank you so much for being here today. Um, and I'm, I really respect your leadership, um, leading three groups of BNI. That's a really awesome thing. Like what, what brought you to BNI in the first place? I, I, uh, have a bit of a history of either by my own decision or being dragged into various leadership. I don't consider myself, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a leader, but whether it's been in coaching or in uh, various, you know, uh, not-for-profit like committees, boards, usually end up in a vice president or president. So maybe I have an innate desire not to be the, you know, the standard bearer, but I just want to help people. So that often I consider myself kind of a leader from the back of the room, but sometimes you have to go to the front of the room to be the leader from the back of the room. <laughs> Can I ask you a slightly uncomfortable question? Yeah, it's a little uncomfortable. I, I consider myself conservative and, and humble. I like to kind of just do my thing, make my mark where it's necessary, not through pride or anything like that. Sure. So is there a possibility, right? Because I'm, I'm, what I'm, can I tell you what I'm hearing? Yes. I'm hearing you're a tremendous leader who consistently is seen as such. And then like, and then you're telling me, but you're not a leader. Right. So why would you frame yourself that way? I'm just curious. Yeah, I, I think perhaps I've struggled with uh, recognition over the year. I feel people should, there shouldn't be an absence of recognition, but I feel uh, perhaps it's been through the social media years, like a, a humble person should not be doing a, taking a selfie. Hey, here we are at the, the food lineup handing out food. One should just go and do that and then carry on without any self-promotion. So I think I've struggled with a little bit of, I'm using the word narcissism, but I'm not sure if that's correct. I just, I, I just, I have struggled with um, maybe how integrity and social media have not uh, been complementary with one another. And then I think that's manifested perhaps in my own self, maybe a little bit negatively. Well, holy cow. Um, thank you for your openness and vulnerability, um, since we really don't know each other well at all. So I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. And, and so, but what, what's present for me is your desire to grow BNI. And I think 
what I'm, what I heard was that's because you know the impact that you can have on people's money, right? Their time freedom and their, their magic, their fulfillment. Is that what I'm hearing? You are absolutely. And I could start listing off, you know, Justin, the landscaper who is now just celebrated as fourth business, you know, fourth year in business. He wasn't going to make it past year two, but now he's, you know, there's no guarantees, but he's hit a solid year four and there's a lot more Justins and those, every story is more heartwarming than the previous when, when, when you hear that. And, and you have been part of the gateway to creating that. That's right. That is that a true statement? Yes, it is. Okay. So I guess my final question would be in this regard, and then I know we have 45 seconds to go, Max, is if if you don't allow people to know that's who you are, right? Like that that's who you are. Not like I'm John. Yeah. But like you're John. Yeah. And you're wise and you're a leader. You have discernment and integrity. Yeah. And you help free. Uh, free up differences in people's lives. Yeah. So if people don't know that's who you are, yeah. couldn't they easily confuse you with like their annoying best friend that's giving them bad advice? Yes, what do you think? Good. Yes, they could. Yeah. yeah. So, so my my two cents, brother, and all I'm trying to go from hello to yes with you about today mm-hmm. is um, something that somebody told me after I had the very unique privilege for the first time of speaking on Tony Robbins stage. Mm-hmm. And I went up and um, I came down and I had people say very nice things to me. And I was very grateful, including some people from his team. And then somebody pulled me aside and said, uh, how do you think you did? I said, yeah, I think I think things went, went well. They said, well, how do you think things really went? I said, um, I think things went very well, but on my scale, I was a five at best. Mm-hmm. On my scale went to 10. And he said, why do you think that was? And I said, because I was hiding. Okay. And he said, you were, I know you were. And yeah. that's why I came over to talk to you. Yeah. So if I could pass along that to you and everybody here, that unique micro distinction, that's not always perfectly found yeah. between being lovingly humble, yeah. but not being falsely modest. So people don't know who to listen to. Right. And that would be my only two cents. That sounds like a fair concept to contemplate, John. It sure does. That's a pretty solid two cents, Sean. Thank you. Well, thank you, brother. And I really appreciate everyone being here. Um, this is a, an incredibly fun way to live life, to have the unique privilege of people like Richard um, putting this together today. Mm-hmm. And this is about the 135th or so since COVID began, Real Raw or Real Raw Open we've done. And uh, sometimes it's a little bit tiring. Sometimes keeping a schedule like this um, is interesting, Um, but it is always an honor and a privilege to connect with people like yourselves and just be unlocking that money, time, and magic we want. So Richard, any final, final words from you today, brother? And thank you again. What a great job you did. And thank you, Shauna, for your judgment. I hope everybody knows I love them because I I just like, I'm a judge, (laughs) but I love you. Yeah. (laughs) So I'm, 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 I'm uh, very heartfelt uh, and, and very grateful in regards to the example that you did with John. Uh, what I identified when you're having that conversation with him is that John's tone of voice was really up there. He was really confident, off and on. And then I could see that shift, that yeah. shift that he, he went, went straight into his heart. Yeah. And you could see his whole body relax. And he was being genuine and real. That wonderful husband that wonderful father that I know. Yeah. And I'm so grateful for that. Yeah. And that yeah. micro distinction right there really allowed me to understand where we can go with this simple and funness. Yeah. Thank and you know, thank you. And Richard, your freeing up of your energy today and being your heart and modeling some of the things that we've all been working on and talking about was present and was palpable. And you did a wonderful job today. Great job, Richard. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. So uh, thank you to all. Uh, if this is the end of our journey and our time together, um, from my heart to yours, we have an incredible ability to have the money, the time, and the magic we want. And it lies within the concepts of influence and loads of micro distinctions 
um, that we were just introducing today and knowing what to do with them. And so if it's the end of our journey, um, go forward and don't hide and love other people and love yourself and your dreams. But hopefully it's only the beginning of our journey together. So thanks and have a great day. Thanks. Thank you.